Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to our Perfect Square Trinomials Part 2. If you haven't watched Part 1, Part 1 explains um, how to factor some simple trinomials. And Part 2, we're going to look at some more challenging trinomials. So if you haven't watched Part 1, you want to make sure to watch that first, and then come back and watch this. Like I said, in Part 1, we looked at trinomials that look largely like this. They have no coefficient in front of the first term. In other words, they have no number sitting right there in front of um, the first term of x squared. But this video will show us what happens when we have a number in front of the first term. For example, here we have 9 in front of the x squared. So if we have a number in front of there, we're going to have to solve it a little bit differently. We'll do largely the same steps, only we're going to have to, to do, well, a couple more things. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. And by the way, the method that I'm going to show you for solving um, trinomials with a coefficient in front, you can use that method for solving the ones without coefficients. The method that I showed you for solving one um, trinomials without the coefficient in front of the first terms, mainly like a shortcut. So here's the method. First of all, we want to check and see if it is a perfect square. So we want to look at this trinomial here and ask a couple of questions. We're going to ask five questions. The first one, is the first term a perfect square? So is 9x squared a perfect square? And if so, what is the square root of that term? 9x squared is a perfect square. It's the same as 3x times 3x. So the square root of that is 3x, as shown over here on the right. And it is a perfect square. The next two questions are about the final term. Is the final term a perfect square? Is 25 a perfect square? Well, yes, it is. And what is the square root of the final term? Well, in this case, 5 is the square root of 25. So those are the first two things you look at. You look at the first term, is it a perfect square? The final term, is it a perfect square? The middle term is the most complicated. What we do with the middle term is we take the results from part 2 and part 4. We take 3x and 5 in this case. And we double them. So 3x times 5 and double that. Okay, So we double the product of the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term. It may sound complicated, but if you write down all the steps, you've got them written down there. We'll do 3x times 5, which is 15x. And we double that. 15 times 2 is 30. And we have the x there. So 30x. Is that, forgetting about the sign, we don't have to worry about the sign there, but is 30x the absolute value of our middle term? And in this case, yes, it is. So we've got the thumbs up on that one. That's our check to see if this is a perfect square. You have to ask these five questions each time. I'll do another example in just a second. Once we know that it's a perfect square, you take the square root of the first term, put it in the parentheses there. Take the square root of the final term, put it in the parentheses there. And you take the sign of the middle term. In this case, it was negative. Negative will go there. And then you put them in parentheses and square it. And that's how you solve it. So if you've already done the work over here, the square root from the first term should be written there. Square root from the final term should be written there. And you can easily get the sign from the middle term. And that's how you solve it. Let's do another one. First, we're going to check and see if this is a perfect square. Do you remember what the first two questions were? They were about our first term. Is it a perfect square? And what is the square root of the first term? 4x squared is a perfect square. And the square root of 4x squared is 2x. Now we'll move on to the, the final term. Is the final term a perfect square, 36y squared? Yes, it is. What's the square root of 36y squared? It's 6y. All right, so that one is a perfect square. That's a perfect square. Now what we need to do is multiply 2x times 6y. That will give us 12xy. And we double that. 12 doubled is 24xy. And if that gives us our middle term, then this is a perfect square. So again, the middle term, excluding the sign, is it double the product of the two square roots. 
So in other words, number two and number four there. And there's what we do. Two is doubling it, 2x times 6y. There's our final answer is 24xy, our middle term. Yes, it is. Therefore, it is a perfect square trinomial. Because it's a perfect square trinomial, we're going to take the square root of the first term and put that inside the parentheses. We'll take the square root of the final term, put that in parentheses, and we'll take the sine of the middle term. So in that case, in this case, it's negative. So we'll end up with this 2x, square root of the first term, minus, that's the sine from the middle term, 6y, which is the square root of the final term, and we put them inside parentheses and square it. And that is how we would solve perfect square trinomials that have a coefficient in front of the first term. Hope this recording's been helpful for you, and have a wonderful day.